comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadre Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. And today, we have an amazing guest. Her name is Melanie, and I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Who am I? Thank you for having me, first of all. Who am I? I am Melanie Santos. I am a mind, body, spirit, wellness practitioner, educator, kundalini yoga teacher, a digital creator as well, mama, wife, human being, New Yorker, Latina, all the things. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Yay! Okay, and then the story, I always tell the comadres how we I met my guests. So Mel and I have been basically running in the same circles for a little while. Um, I first started following her on Instagram, and then I believe we both attended an event by Brujas of Brooklyn. Uh, I believe it was like the portrait series. Um, I forgot the name of the series. Anyway, we met there in person, and then, you know, we were always, like, commenting on each other's um, posts and stuff like that, and um, we basically had kind of, like, an online friendship for a few years now, so I'm so happy to have you on the show, Um, and I feel like today's topic is so apropos because we're going to be exploring spirituality and mental health. Um, the reason why the topic came up is that Melanie was one of those people that really motivated me to look deeper and search for more meaning. Um, and it was via her transparency with her spiritual journey that I started to look more into spirituality and meditation and even furthermore into Kundalini yoga as well as a spiritual practice. And um, that's pretty much it. And since the focus this month for the podcast is a mental health for um, parents, you know, we're going to be tying that into the show as well. So before we get started, uh, you said, what is your career? My career. I'm a mind, body, spirit, wellness educator. If we put it, if we put it in a one term holistic practice, practitioner and educator. And I also create content um, on social media because it's the biggest avenue that we have for education right now. Yeah, um, your reach is like far reaching. So you have your beautiful YouTube channel, which I love all your videos, plus the Instagram. Um, I don't think you've got into TikTok just yet. I'm on TikTok, girl. I'm you are TikTok, almost at 10K, <laughs> almost at 10K as we're recording this right now. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like all your videos are, you know, it all ties in with your theme, which is wellness which is amazing so i know you launched your your own business what the has that been like for you actually as we're recording this right now i think today is the nine year anniversary of what really started this business i started a blog on tumblr you remember tumblr back in the day and Really, the blog was a place for me to just talk about my experiences because I had just recently been formally diagnosed with clinical depression and generalized anxiety disorder. I was about 23 at the time, 22, 23. And I'm a very expressive person, very creative person. I do better when I can share my story. I feel like I get it out of my system. You know, I get it out there. So starting the blog was really part of my healing. And what resulted from that was me writing these blog posts, which were anything from like my favorite pair of shoes of the moment. to like my favorite song, the concert that I was going to, and, you know, the conversations that I was having with my Latino family about, you know, my anxiety and my depression, um, the things that I was doing to treat myself, um, opposed, uh, as opposed to taking medication because I've never taken medication. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just a mm-hmm. personal decision that I made. Um, so, I was doing something, I always like to say that I have been blogging about mental health before it was cool because now yeah. everybody wants to talk about mental health, everybody. Right? which is perfect. It's amazing. But I was doing it at a time where like, I knew that when I was pressing submit on a blog post, I was going to go to work the next day, or I was going to meet up with my friends and they were going to be like, Aquí viene like, what, what yeah. is she, what, like, what, you know, <laughs> be getting the side eyes and the stares because it, it, they just weren't conversations that we were having yet. So yeah. that was back in 2013. That has evolved. I shut down the blog. I've restarted it. I've re-evolved it. 
And today it really is a full circle business for me where I continue to tell my story. I really do at the foundation continue to share my experiences um, as a human being, as a woman, as a mother, um, as a Latina, you know, I'm first generation Cuban Dominican from New York. Like that means something in itself. Um, my experiences dealing with mental health disorders, my experiences dealing with mental health disorders in America, which is something else. My experiences with dealing with mental health disorders as a psychic medium, which is a whole nother level, right? And what that all means as me knowing that I'm a spirit living this human experience and what I can do to make that human experience a little bit more cushioned, a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, I feel like the way that you have been sharing your journey, I've seen your evolution from like, you know, Mel on the blog, the Tumblr days, all the way till now. And it's, it has really come full circle and I've seen your growth as a person. And also you have never been that type of spiritual person. That's like, Oh my God, look at all the chakras oh and the rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> and like, it's all beautiful all the time. No, like you were really real in the sense that you were really exposing yourself. I'm like, you know, putting up a mirror and really showing people what it's like. Cause it's not when you're going through a spiritual awakening, it's not all positive. <laughs> oh, no. You, you oh, know, no. doing that shadow work and really delving into, you know, stand in your shit and like dust the corners and do like the spring cleaning all over the place. Like Mia says, it's hard. It is not an easy task. And, you know, I want to thank you. Cause the thing is, Seeing you doing doing that like really motivated me, and I know I've thanked you before, but it really motivated me to kind of analyze things in a different perspective and and turn on another lens and really see where I was lacking or not that lacking necessarily where I needed to do the work to help me heal from a more profound um place so I know you you have several blog posts and you have done a couple of YouTube videos regarding your um your struggles with mental health. So I want to kind of like expound a little bit on that. I know that you don't take medication. So what have what was it that you noticed at the beginning that I know you've spoken about this in your platform before, but like, I know I don't know if some of the comadres um, follow you or not. But what was it that you noticed that really had you be like, mm, something's not right? that made you reach out and look for help? I mean, everything. Uh, I went through a week where, you know, trigger warning, but I almost committed suicide. And at that point I was living in my parents' house. Um, and that whole week, it was like eight days straight. I did not get out of bed. I did not eat. I did not shower. Fue like sopita being like brought to my mouth. And I was just like, I don't want it. Like, I don't want to die. Um, and I think at that point, it was less like me knowing I have a problem because I was screaming it from the rooftops. Like, I have a problem and I don't know what to do. Again, back then we weren't talking about this is going on. Well, you need to get therapy and this is and therapy is OK. For me, it wasn't. It was not OK. It was not an option because my family said it wasn't an option. So it wasn't so much like, oh, my God, something's wrong. Here's here's my course of action. Because, again, there were not many blog posts or things like that for people like myself. You know, there were resources and courses of action for white people and for people who were other than me. Um, so when it came to me being sick and feeling that bad and feeling like I just didn't want to exist anymore, it was more an awakening that my family had to have for me. And so I thank God every day that, you know, my life has panned out in the way that it has, even the worst moments, because they've resulted in this and me sitting here with you today and being able to have this conversation. And even that week, like I was living at home and I remember, you know, my mom coming into the room and feeding me like sopita Maggie in my mouth. And she's like, you need to eat like, te vas a morir. And I'm like, and I remember looking at her and being like, pero yo me quiero morir. Mm -hmm. And I think at that moment, she was just like, oh shit, like we really have a problem here. And it was my mom you know, lo and behold, who sat with me in the living room couch and looked for a therapist for me. 
And that was just like one life changing for me. You know, every time I tell this story, people are like wide eyed, like, oh my God, like, Mm -hmm. because it just wasn't happening. And it still isn't happening. Like people still don't know that that's a thing that they can do um, or that it's accessible or, you know, even if it's not accessible, what could, what they can do otherwise. Um, From there, it really was a landslide for me. I was going to therapy two or three times a week for um, that year. And it really changed my life. Um, I'm not going to say that I was cured and I got better and da 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 because that's definitely not the case. That was mm-hmm. almost 10 years ago now, and I'm still very much um, in this balancing act. But it definitely set me on a course to being curious about what is this really about and really diving below the layers because it's not just a brain problem. It's an everything problem. Yeah. And I think that really lays the foundation for everything that I do today. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I shared this on the show before, but you know, I feel like as Latinas, we're never, it's never spoken about like, oh, tu sabe, you should go to therapy or you should talk to somebody about that. Um, I've been through very traumatic events in my life and it, it was never something that was brought up like as an option. It was kind of like, you're going to be okay. You know, take a deep breath, eat some sancocho, you're going to be fine, right? Yeah. But it's... <laughs> I got to a point that I wasn't fine. And, you know, you looking at you and Ada's journey really like brought it home to me like, oh, this is something I can do. I can go to therapy. I can talk to somebody else that's not my family. That's not going to judge me based on the things that I share with that person. And that's not going to go back and bring it to somebody else that's going to be like, you know, bochinchando behind my back, you know, discussing what I was going through. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's really, I feel like having these conversations, the fact that we can have these conversations and having them is so necessary for our community. And I really, you know, I appreciate you and all the other ladies that have been so via social media have been so open and honest about what they're going through, not only sharing the positive, but also sharing the not so positive things that are out there. Right. So I think, I, I mm-hmm. think, sorry to interrupt you, but like, okay. thank you for that. Cause it means a lot. You know, I'm not going to say that it's easy at all. There are times where I'm like, I'm going to hit send on this. This video has been recorded. It took me four hours. That editing took me two hours and I'm still sitting there with the computer in my hand. Like, Oh my God, I'm terrified. Mm-hmm. You know, it never, I don't think for me it ever gets easier. However, I think at best we are all teachers to each other and we're mm-hmm. all just like holding each other hand in hand, trying to lead us somewhere. Um, so anytime I get to share my truth, the gruesome truth, the happy truth, which thank to God, it's been a lot of happy things um, going on lately in my life just because mm-hmm. of my journey, my trajectory and how serious I've taken things. Um, but anytime I can share my story, it's like, I need to, it means a lot. Yeah. So besides going to therapy and like embarking on that entire journey that you started, what uh, what other things did you do to help yourself through that moment? Lots and lots and lots and lots of self-education. I want to say that therapy has been like maybe 10, 20 percent of my journey. The rest has been me. The rest has been me diving into, OK, my mind is one organ. What about the rest of them? Are, is everything else functioning the way that it needs to? It's seen nutritionists. And granted, what I'm going to say, um, there's a lot of privilege in uh, what I'm going to say in the way that I have been able to care for myself. I absolutely know that. It's not lost on me that I've had the means um, to be able to, to do um, what I've been able to do and dive into the resources that I've been able to dive into. And because of that, I share whatever I can for free. Like I'm on these YouTube videos and I'm on these posts and Instagram posts and stories sharing every little piece of information that I've paid for, for free, because I know that, you know, treatment and these resources are super inaccessible um, in our country and in many others. So for me, it's looked like um, looking at my nutrition, what are the foods that I'm eating that are toxic to my body, man, getting a, a food sensitivity test has been life changing. Mm -hmm. Like I had no idea that I'm supposed to be gluten free. I'm supposed to be rice free. Bro, I don't eat rice. Like it's crazy. Um, because it's toxic to my body. So 
So doing things like that, um, moving my body and learning how important it is to move your freaking body. And that's yeah. been, again, the, the last almost three years that we've been in this pandemic, super hard. Um, being, you know, a New Yorker living in an apartment, not wanting to disturb the people who live below you or like, you know, not being able to leave the house to do some of these things. But like, it's also become so much more of a priority because of that. So definitely connecting again, the, the mind, the body and the spirit has been major on the spiritual front. Just again, diving into, wait a minute, I'm not just a human body. I'm also, or uh, before I'm a human body, I'm a spirit. And because I'm a spirit, I need very intricate care. I need to sit with myself for 10, 20, 15, 30. Now I can sit, sit in meditation for an hour, but that's come with practice um, and talk to myself. If I, you know, there's been times that I couldn't afford therapy. There's been years that I couldn't afford therapy. And what did I turn to? A $5 journal that I bought from Marshalls because we know we all have those $5 journals. We got a million mm-hmm. of them from Marshalls and from TJ Maxx. Dive into a journal. Ask yourself, you know, what are you lying to yourself about? What is it that's, you know, afflicting you in that moment? And dive into like every single symptom and every single little thing that's coming to mind for you. So it's been a lot of like intricate, like I think of myself as like this Lego castle. Thinking of my daughter at all times, Love obsessed it. with Legos. <laughs> <laughs> obsessed with Legos, but like taking little pieces and examining what, okay, this one doesn't go here, but this one does. Um, I think I'm rambling now, but I think most recently what's been really, really, really eye-opening and has really changed the game for me. And I'm kind of jumping ahead because I'm going to do a YouTube video about this soon, but I'll say it here first, is reading books. And discovering that I'm not just somebody who's anxious and depressed. I'm actually a highly sensitive person. And that has been like, oh, so you mean that I am somebody who is, I've always known I'm sensitive. Hello, Gemini uh, sun, but I'm a cancer moon, (laughs) cancer rising. I got cancer everywhere. I'm a crybaby. I've always known that I'm sensitive, but what is a highly sensitive person? Somebody who experiences arousal at very, very high states. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I'm super hyper aroused or, or under aroused, that can create really, really big avenues for anxiety and depression. So that, again, like diving into and asking the questions and finding different ways to educate myself has completely changed the game. I want to say, I'm going to dare I say, even more than therapy, even yeah. more than therapy. Self-education is one of the biggest things that I have done. Like, really, like, you and Ada, especially you, you're like, dump your therapist. If it's not working, then, like, you need to get rid of that person. And I literally, during the pandemic, I started feeling, like, every time I had to sit through a, a, one of those virtual sessions that I wasn't going in person, I was like, coño, otra vez. I have to see this lady. Yeah. And I felt like it wasn't working for me. Like her style of therapy, it, nothing to do with her. She's a great therapist. It's just like at the beginning it was fine. But then I feel like I need more. I need somebody that's going to really, you know, go deep with me and really analyze things on a different level. That is going to really put up a mirror to me and then also offer solutions. I'm a very like, you know, the way that we, me and you talk I love to have discussions with people, right? So that you can kind of bring me your perspective and I bring my perspective and then together we I can come up with a solution for myself. I can't just sit there and have somebody just listen to me and they're like, mm, okay, mm. Mm-hmm. that doesn't work for me, right? It does yeah. work for some other people. So, you know, I had to dump my therapist. And then another thing that I did was that, you know, I started picking up books. I picked up Queen of Fools book, right? Ooh, I picked Queen of Fools book is a classic. Awesome yeah. Book. There was a book um that you recommended, Marianne. What is it? Um, Marianne Williamson, A Return to Love. Yes, A Return to Love. I picked that up. I picked up another one, Healing Your Chakras. Yes. I I started reading all about the human body, the human body, not only that, but like your spiritual body. So yeah. you know, and then through the practices of the sadhanas with the Bruhas of Brooklyn, mm-hmm. you know, really looking at the blockages that I had in my body and like really analyzing it in a way that I can come up with solutions for myself that I'm like, okay with like, okay, so now I'm going to start stacking the wellness practices. So first I started with, um, there's this little prayer book that I have. It's called the uh, prayers to the seven sacred flames. 
I started doing that consistently. Once I started doing that consistently, I'm like, okay, what else can I do to help myself feel better? I start my morning with gratitude. Before I even put my feet on the floor in the bed, I'm saying three things that I'm grateful for, right? After I do, after I do that, you know, I do the the prayers at, I don't always do them in the house. I do them at work. Like I have prep in the morning. So, you know, I'll do them at work and then I'll do a 15 minute meditation. Right now, I'm, all, I'm only up to 15 minutes. If I can do more, I'll do more, right? You know, when I can participate in the sadhanas, I do the sadhanas as well. So it's like, you know, you start stacking. It's it, But it, you have to start with something. One thing that you can do to make yourself feel better, do that for 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you can in the day is going to be so life-changing for you another thing that i noticed mel that i i i don't i haven't shared before on the podcast i've always been a musical person i used to love to Mm. sing and dance that was something i used to do on saturday mornings i would get up with my grandma when she was staying with us and we would clean the house play music of course anthony santo frank or frank reyes whoever dancing and cleaning and I started noticing that when my depression started hitting, I wasn't moving my body in that way anymore. I wasn't singing anymore. And it was um, the thing that really made me look at it was that I read um, a Native American saying is that when people would come to the, I guess, the shaman or the medicine man saying that they were suffering from anxiety and depression, the question they would, he would ask or she would ask them is, when did you stop singing? When did you, when did you stop mm-hmm. dancing? And that was like, I was like, oh shit, I'm not doing that anymore. So, you know, integrating movement in one way or another, even if I'm twerking by myself in the kitchen while I'm cooking, it has helped me tremendously. And I know the the commanders are probably going to laugh, but it works. Like you literally have to move. The energy needs to move through your body. You need to be able to push that stagnant energy around to help yourself start to feel better. First of all, if the comadres want to know the scientific uh, roots of what we're talking about, both twerking and singing, I can share it real quick. Yeah, go there ahead. Is. There, there is science behind <laughs> this. Um, I love that you're mentioning the sadhanas. I love that you're mentioning um, singing because I'm newly certified kundalini yoga teacher and kundalini yoga has also insanely changed my life, but it's also given me so much more. I'm a big time nerd, if you can already tell. Um, but so much more scientific education, like so much more science to connect the mind, body, and spirit. So when we're twerking, especially, I want everybody to listen to this, which is super important. <laughs> Anytime you're at the club, you're going to be like, nah, I'm, I'm doing a science project right now. Okay. <laughs> this is a science experiment. <laughs> this is for me. This is healing. You're literally moving your sacral chakra. You're moving your sacral chakra, which is in like two inches below your belly button. This is your womb energy. You're also moving your solar plexus, which is in your your belly button, basically your navel. Your navel is the where we all originate. Think of like um, where the umbilical cord connects the mother to the to the fetus, the mm-hmm. mother to the baby. It's through there. This is like the opening of life. This is also where all of the energy centers, 72,000 energy centers connect in the body. And then the sacral chakra is our space of creativity and emotion um and manifestation and sexuality sensuality and as women especially i mean this also works for men shout out to all the men that are twerking (laughs) (laughs) but and all the people all the non-binary people that are twerking but like this this works for everybody because we're again moving these parts of our bodies when it comes to singing um that's your throat chakra you know, your throat chakra is connected to your authenticity. It's connected to your truth. And when you are speaking, this is why I always like tell people one of my favorite tools that um, free tools that we can all do and all share is to record your own affirmations, either say them out loud, which is why, you know, it's so powerful to say it out loud or record them and play them back to yourself because everybody has a unique voice. Sure. We may, you know, there may be people who sound alike, but your voice, you got to think of it as your own unique frequency. Mm-hmm. So when you bring up this, you know, this line about the, the shaman asking, you know, the person who is sick, when did you stop singing? It absolutely makes sense. You know, use the tools that you have. People are often so gun ho and so like, oh, my God, tengo que comprar esto, and I have to buy this book and mm-hmm. I have to buy this. And I'm like, hello, all you, you got is within you. All you need is within you. Yes. You are the t- only tool that you need. Sure, the books may help and the podcast may help and the videos may help. But at the end of the day. Take in what you need and then stop and do it yourself. You know, use yourself. I love that. 
Yeah, definitely. That once I started integrating that into my daily practices, I feel like my mood has changed. I'm not going to tell you I'm like 100% happy all the time. Of course. But it's easier to get back to center because I'm doing these daily practices. So when I'm having one of those like off days, I sit, I let myself have my feeling. Because the thing is also, it's like, oh my God, that post that you did about the toxic positivity. Like really like, I'm like. Which one? Because I've done so many. (laughs) No, there was one that you were just like, these people that are like, oh my God, uh, oh, you know, just like, totally you know, all the, all the, all the rainbows and whatever. No. So you have to let yourself have the feeling. Cause the thing is, it's not constructive to be like, oh my God, you're being negative. Like, don't do that right now. No, have the feeling, recognize it, be mindful of it. And then do something to, to, to work on that. Right. You're not, it's not that you're not going to have negative feelings. You are, are you going to harbor in there? Are you going to just like, you know, set down the anchor and just wallow in those feelings? No, but you need to have those feelings and recognize what is causing you to have those feelings, right? And recognize those triggers within yourself, which is something very important. I feel, I feel that, I don't know, some people, you know, go through the world that they're so like unaware, kind of like everything happens to them. They're not really cognizant of everything that's going on in their lives but definitely having a moment to sit down and kind of you know somebody triggers you okay yeah they're an asshole right Mm -hmm. but what is it about that person that is having making you have that reaction right because you can't control the other person what you can control is your reaction to that person but then you also have to dive deeper and see what it is either the thing they said or what they do that is bothering you. And usually that's a reflection of something that you want to work on in yourself. (laughs) Everything and everyone is a mirror. Everything and everyone is a mirror. I I love that you're bringing up like uh, these videos that I do on toxic positivity because I just, I really dislike um, people who, and sometimes it'd be the people with the most followings, which is so just irritating to me. It's something that me and my ego are working on. (laughs) Um, but it'd be be the people with the biggest followings talking about quote unquote spirituality, talking about, you know, no bad vibes, good vibes only. And I'm like, yo, but that doesn't make any sense because look at where we live. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are people who are truly living in isolation, truly living in their own good vibe bubble. And like, what type of education are you talking about? What kind of spirituality are you talking about? Because mm-hmm. it's, that's not, that's not what we're here for. You know, you can't have the good without the bad. And it's mm-hmm. usually in the darkness where you discover your light. Um, and that sounds all like a Hallmark card. I now realize, but it's very, very true. <laughs> you know, I think that we are also as electromagnetic beings, we're always bouncing energy off of each other and we yeah. cannot learn. We can't progress. We cannot grow. We cannot expand if it's not for having those moments, unfortunately, where we're triggered, where we are able to, like you said, ask yourself, what is it about that person that's ticking me off? What is it that's bouncing off of me to them and going back to me that's, that's feeling this icky right now. Mm -hmm. And that's when you go to the journal and, you know, discover that, or if you have the means to sit with a therapist and have somebody talk to, uh, to talk to about this, or maybe it's not a therapist, maybe it's somebody that you trust that is going to be as non-biased as possible in having this conversation. But all these vibes, all of them, give me all of them because they're all necessary. They're yeah. all super, super necessary. There's no way that we can grow if we're only having positive vibes all the time. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally it's impossible. So you mentioned all these spiritual practices that you looked into to help you heal. Um, the with the with the let's talk about a little about the about the nutrition right you you said that you did um a food sensitivity test did you go to um these ladies um my wellness solutions or did you go somewhere else i did i did <laughs> and i went to them to start now i'm also working with parsley health um which has been amazing because i've been able to do so much more than nutrition mm-hmm. um i'm doing nutrition testing with them i'm doing hormone testing which is huge our endocrine system is like everything everything Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and as black and brown women like we are disproportionately affected by things like pcos and endometriosis and things that fully affect our endocrine system 
which is why I'm so excited that you're talking about Kundalini yoga, because that affects our endocrine system in beautiful, beautiful ways. Um, but I'm working with Parsley Health. I'm working on my nutrition, working on my, you know, my endocrine system, checking out my hormones, um, checking on like every single little thing to do with my blood. I'm like, I want to know it all. Um, just a few weeks ago, I was at a lab and they took uh, 18 tubes of blood from me. <laughs> and I was just like the happiest person working, walking out of that lab. And the lady's looking at me like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm so hyped to get my results. And she thought it was so weird. But I love getting blood work done. I even went on stories to talk about it on, on Instagram because I'm like, there is nothing more amazing than, again, having the means to be able to care for yourself. Yes. Like if you're able to even save up your coins, like save up your coins and go and do something like this. Go, you know, see somebody, an expert, a practitioner who's able to go through a specific program with you and get all this testing done. Mm -hmm. I promise you it's going to be life changing. And the best part of it is that usually you only have to do it once. Yeah. If you're really good at like taking down the notes and like what is disproportionately affecting your body and what's affecting your body in negative ways. You're going to change the habits once and you'll keep it rolling. And maybe down the line, maybe 10 years later, you'll do it again because your body changes. But yeah. that has been so major. And again, it does not, it's not like it doesn't come with challenges. Um, I very much look forward to the days where like I do eat rice. Like we just had, you know, Thanksgiving and I was so hyped to make my moro de gandule <laughs> because I don't usually eat it on a daily basis anymore. But my body feels so much better. I have this conversation with friends and with clients all the time um, because in the energy sessions that, that I used to do, I would see like, you know, there are foods that you're eating that are affecting you in ways that are not good. You know, so often we're like doing all the spiritual rituals and we're like seeing the therapist and we're journaling and the disconnection is coming from our food. food. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. And so I have these conversations with people and they're like, but how can I give up the carne con habichuela? And I'm like, listen, trust me when I tell you, I've been on this journey for a few years now with my nutrition and my movement. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing better. Like, sure, that plate of food that is not doing your body the best is going to taste amazing, but nothing tastes better than feeling good in your body. Yeah. And so I, I like to repeat that to everybody who's like on this like food and like physical journey, because especially to, to Latinos, like the, to, the, to the comadres out there, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we, we deal with this in levels. There is like the 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 food and the eating and our relationship to food, which is totally out of whack yes. um, for, for most people. Our relationship to our bodies and how we see our bodies is totally out of whack. And that can affect our mental health in really disproportionate ways, yes. um, especially if you're a parent. I definitely went through that. I've talked about it in videos nonstop. You know, I gained 50 pounds after my pregnancy and my hair, you know, stopped curling and I have curly hair my entire life and it was falling out. And I didn't know what to do with myself mm -hmm. because I didn't feel like me. So all that stuff and really going on this journey to discover, you know, what are the roots of this has changed my mental health, like insurmountably. Yeah. And really loving ourselves for who we are. Because the thing is, a lot of the time we're we're so fucking hard on ourselves. We don't give ourselves grace. And right. you know, I don't really curse on my show, but it it really looking back at how I used to treat myself before I went on this healing journey, I was so mean to myself all right. the time. And I know it comes from childhood and you know, your first inner voices the people that took care of you, right? Like, however they spoke to you is how you speak to yourself. So, you know, changing that has made such a significant change in my life. And then I wanted to kind of touch on the the nutrition piece. So my friend, um, Hazel, she was on the show before. She's a um, a teacher. Uh, she also cannot eat rice. She cannot eat um, beans either. So wow. it's, you know, she went vegan, um, for a while and now she listens to her body whenever she does need like fish or meat, whatever she'll have it. But the difference in her being like as a whole, as a holistic being from when I met her till now is like night and day mm -hmm. because we really don't realize how food affects us in, in like, it's, amazing like anything the thing with me I feel like mm, through my family like my lineage we heal via herbs and food and things like that 
my grandma was always one to be like, you'd be like, mama, me duele la barriga, my stomach hurts. She'd be like, ay, hazte un té de oregano, whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. So I grew up with that kind of thinking of about food. But however, you know, we still have to work on those. I feel like it's like almost like traumas or or just like kind of habits that are passed down to us that are not good. I remember when I went vegan, people were like, que tú no estás comiendo carne, you're not eating meat. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, and, and then it was so it was so interesting once I started having certain things that I took out of my diet to see how my body reacted to it. And that was when I basically, I kind of like did a sensitivity for myself. Like those things that yeah. I noticed that they didn't work in my body. I just stopped having them. And, and because I was vegan for a while, it didn't really make a, a, a big difference, but definitely I want to urge the comadres to go and have that blood work done and sit with a holistic practitioner. Cause the thing is, General practitioners, they're great. You know, you go in, whatever, they give you a patilla, they give you something to take care of yourself, sure, whatever. But the holistic practitioner is really going to look at those levels because the thing is they're going to give you a, it's a bell curve. So as long as you're within that bell curve, they're going to be like, you're normal, you're fine, you're healthy. Exactly. But a holistic practitioner is really going to look, are you on the end or at the beginning exactly. of the bell curve exactly. are you you know are you hypo or hyper like 10 like moving towards a hyper so they're gonna look at your at your blood work and really analyze it on a level that is gonna make sense to you and like make recommendations that are gonna help you better yourself and help you tap into that wellness like really looking at your body and healing yourself in that way Absolutely. I think that I can already hear people asking themselves the question, well, how do I find them? Right. Um, I want to say this, that people don't know that they're able to ask their PCP, their their um, their primary care practitioner to test for more than they usually test. That was my first step a couple of years ago was saying, you know, we always get I always get the same blood work. You know, I'm a mom now. My body has changed. I want to test for this, this, this and this. You know, my mom was predisposed to hypothyroidism. So I want to test not only T3, but all the T's and I want to test this. And my practitioner was down for it. You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of it comes with just advocating for yourself. So I think that's a, that's a step that everybody can take because the holistic practitioners are far and few between and none of them take insurance. And it's just, it does become a hassle. Like all these things, like, I don't even want to get into the conversation about like capitalism and how, you know, the government really tries to keep us away from like, the things that are good for us, but it's true. You know, <laughs> we start whole, talking about it now. We're not going to finish. Oh, nah. <laughs> you know, we'll, 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 yeah, this will be a, that, that's for another podcast. Leave that for, for another podcast, but all the things that are truly good for us, this is why, again, a lot of it is self-discovery. A lot of it comes through self-education. So know that even like if, if it's not accessible for you to pay for, you know, a holistic practitioner or something like a par- parsley health um, or, you know, do a program like that, go through it on your own. You're going to have to push a little bit. A lot of what I've done has been pushing, pushing with my therapists, pushing with my PCPs. Like, no, I need you to test for this. And I don't want you to just tell me I'm good. I want to see the numbers. And I want to see what it's about. You can also like go to your own labs. Like I go to LabCorp, shout out to LabCorp. And I ask for my own, my own uh, blood work back so that when you look at the bell curve, you can look at it yourself. It's not just that you're, you're in the green or the red. How low am I on the green? Yeah. And how can I get to where I need to be? A lot of the times I'm on Google, like what are the right amounts of vitamin D I need to be at? Yes. Because I'm at a level this and I need to be at a level that. And a lot of it, again, is me doing it for me. Like, yeah. You really got to care that much to do it for you or press your doctor to tell you, you know, I want to know what the true levels are. Like, what are the optimum levels that I should be at? And what can I do at home to get there? Yeah. So when I went to my wellness solution, um, Violeta, shout out to Violeta. She looked at my blood work and she was like, Marcy, you're, your testosterone levels are low. This is why you're having a hard time losing weight. And I did a whole program with them. You know, I changed my nutrition and I was uh, documenting everything. And I was was doing like a weight loss program with them. But within that analysis of the blood work, she noticed that my hormone levels were low. So what did she do? She gave me a pellet in my butt, which hurt. 
<laughs> they injected a pellet in my butt. Oh my god, a testosterone pellet in my butt, and um, it lasted for a while, and it actually helped me significantly. Not only that, but when you have low testosterone levels as a female, you have as a woman rather, um, you have issues with sleep. You can't oh, sleep. So many things. Again, this is endocrine system. Is everything <laughs> people don't even know it is everything people think like oh i can't sleep or i can't lose weight or i have skin problems or you know my libido is low or too high like mm-hmm. what is it it's literally like it's it's literally playing bal- a balancing act how much more how much less do i need to do or take in of each thing it's crazy it's really yeah insane. and when i got off the birth control because I, I no longer take birth control i mean i'm not doing anything right now but besides that i'm not taking birth control anymore (laughs) but what i noticed is that once i got off the birth control that i was detoxing my whole skin my skin went bananas 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 and it's the thing is that we're taking in all these hormones right these artificial hormones we don't know what the 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 side effects are really because in the united states we keep they keep pushing this like take the birth control, take the birth control, take the birth control. But there's so many other side effects to that. And we really need to research. Like, I'm not going to tell anybody don't take birth control because, like, you know, if that's what is accessible to you, take it. But, however, do your research and try to see what you can do to counteract the effects of the birth control or whatever it is, like, either via food or whatever else you can do to heal yourself. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. people have no idea like how much like I, I see this in sessions all the time in, in my energy sessions where I'm in somebody's deep in somebody's sacral chakra and we're like looking at health and wellness and nutrition and all these things that are affecting the inside of the body and showing up on the outside of the body. And they're like, oh, I'm on birth control or all these pills and things that they're taking. And I'm like, mm-hmm. do you use perfume? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, did you ever think that your perfume could be your endocrine disruptor? And they're like, wow. what? I'm like, do you use shampoo, this specific shampoo and conditioner? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, did you ever think that that could be your endocrine disruptor? Like, it's it could be something as simple as fragrance. Yeah. Which is why, like, people like to make fun of, you know, oh, this person's a hippie and they don't use aluminum deodorant or, like, they use this and that. But I'm good, though. But I'm good, though, right? <laughs> and I've made all these decisions to, like, you know, use certain products and switch over to things that are less toxic and, you know, following all these Instagram accounts and reading all these books and, and not choosing to make certain decisions because they're good for me. So by all means, do what you want to do, but don't underestimate the choices that we make every single day that are affecting us even more than or equally as much as things like birth control and, you know, affecting things like our hormone, our testosterone, our estrogen levels, which affect everything. I've had Mm -hmm. people who come to me and they're like, is there a spiritual reason why, you know, I'm dealing with infertility? And I'm like, no. No, it's this food that you're eating. It's this <laughs> chemical that's that's in your makeup. Like, and people get off of it. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, I'm not Jesus Christ. I just can see. I'm a psychic. I can see it. I'm gonna tell you what I see, and it's up to you to make the change. But don't under- underestimate, you know, how much it's little things. It is the little things, twenty four seven, who are just like all around our life that are affecting us in more in, in more ways than we think. One of the things that the comadres can do if you really want to look, like if you want to do the research and really look into what it is that could be affecting you or your hormones, download the Think Dirty app and you can literally put in all the things that you use, uh, cosmetics, anything else, fragrances. And it'll tell you exactly if it's a dirty product, which means that you should get rid of it or find an alternative for it. Um, I know some people are going to be heartbroken because there's some things that I know that are oh. terrible. Like, what was it that I had to get rid of? The Eco Styler gel? But it, oh. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> there, there's been lotions, like favorite pe- favorite makeup that I've had to get rid of. That I'm like, oh, hurt my soul. Like things that I've been using for years and years and years, sometimes decades. And I'm like, you're so bad for me. It's like that toxic, that X that you just keep going back to. Oh but like, God, yeah. It's crazy, but it really does affect us in crazy ways. So I wanted to ask you, all this new knowledge, how has it helped you mother in a better way? Because I feel like your relationship with Ava is like, I feel 
a, a, if I was Ava, I would be such a happy little girl because I feel like <laughs> the relationship you guys have together and the way that you let her be herself really does show. Um, so how has that helped you mother in a different way? Thank you so much. That means so much because most of the time I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I think that's a constant for every parent that we don't know what we're doing. These kids don't come with guidebooks. We're doing our best. <laughs> Um, and it really comes in levels because I think me being first generation American, like I'm just trying to do it better than my parents did. Like my parents did a fantastic job with the education that they had and the way that the ways that they were raised, Mm -hmm. um, and the resources that they had, but like you brought us here for something better. So I'm going to try to do better. Mm -hmm. And so doing all these things and nutrition and, you know, mental health wise and me being in therapy, you know, from before, way before I became a mother, has changed everything, everything, Marcy, everything in the way that I parent. Um, my daughter takes many vitamins every day. <laughs> she She's just recently, she takes a multivitamin. Um, she takes the iron supplement because we're both low in iron, like mother, like daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just recently got her into digestive enzymes. And she knows like if, if she you know eats dairy, she needs to bring her little enzymes to school. And it just makes me so proud because sometimes she reminds me. Mommy, oh, wow. you forgot to give me my vitamin. And I'm like, so <laughs> proud of her. So proud of her. Because there are adults that forget to take their vitamins. And here's my five-year-old, like, on it, right? Yeah. Or, you know, she'll, it, it's it's all, like, a lot of it is her just wanting to copy me. You know, kids always model, you know, what they see. Um, so it's not so much that I am, like, oh, my God, let me pretend that I'm doing this thing. It's like, no, I'm just going to be myself. I'm going to make sure that I'm making good choices for myself, that I'm yes. responding to life and responding to others, both in front of my daughter and away from her in ways that are healthy for me and healthy for everybody involved. Mm-hmm. And she's just with me. And that has been really great. I think it has made parenting, I don't want to say easier, but less stressful. Yeah. Um, it also uh, just, it just flows. Um you know, she watches me meditate and now she has a little meditation corner in her bedroom. Right. She sees that we have a library full of books and she asks for them. So she has a library full of books. Um, she's just great. And I think that, you know, yeah, like healing myself in all these different ways and, and really being uh, making my healing in all these different levels of priority has shifted the way that I parent in, in, in ways that just flow. I'm just super grateful for it. Yeah. So besides the singing and the dancing, how else do you tap into your inner child? Oh, playing with my daughter for sure. It's like the easiest way. Um, Play itself, like play and pleasure are some two things that I've just recently really, really started to prioritize. Sadly, I think that we lose that, you know, we lose that as adults at some point, like, um, we play really, you know, crazy. We're really imaginative when we're kids. And when we go to college, we're making jokes. And then at some point in our early twenties, we start to like become adults and we start to get, get serious. More serious and we lose that aspect, right. Of like what pleasure is pleasure starts to become synonymous with like sexuality, which is like not the case at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so really returning to play has been so healing, like so healing, Um, we make sure that, you know, on the weekends we dedicate at least one day to like doing something that's going to be, uh, awesome and fun for her. And also for us, like Mm -hmm. she, she just celebrated her fifth birthday and we did a three day extravaganza. We (laughs) decided not to do like a party or anything. We're like, okay, day one is going to be like Poppy and Ava. We went to a Knicks game, our first Knicks game together. Um, (laughs) And then Saturday is Ava's birthday. We're going to go to see this Encanto experience, which like if any parent is like listening to this right now, take your kids to go to the camp stores and they have this amazing like Encanto experience. Like the movie, it's amazing. And then Sunday is going to be a mommy and Ava thing. And we went to go see Aladdin on Broadway because for my fifth birthday, we had a, mine was an, an Aladdin birthday party. And so we like to do that a lot, like even on on, on non-holiday things, uh, non-holiday events, do things that are going to be fun for all of us, expose her to really cool things that we like, and also expose ourselves to things that she likes. Um, you'd be surprised how many Legos are probably like hiding in the crevices of my house because <laughs> we're, we're all obsessed. We actually just bought my husband and I a Lego set for him and I, not oh even Ava. <laughs> It's like the the succulent flower Legos. Oh, my God. So cool. So freaking cool. 
but like yeah like play like it's super 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 important um besides the 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 singing the dancing the meditating you know the the therapy like something as simple as like making sure that you're baking in fun to your week is Mm -hmm. everything i was listening to a podcast by mel robbins and she was addressing the fact that we tend to be so serious and we should be the ones initiating the fun, especially for the holidays. Like be wild, be kooky, make jokes, plan weird activities that nobody has ever done in your family before, but you know, take the initiative and and do something that's out of the ordinary, you know, doing something that's out of the ordinary, that's going to take everybody out of their comfort zone. And, and, and you know, it's going to be fun. My family, we just, uh, for Thanksgiving, you know, I'm not pro whatever the reasoning behind the Thanksgiving, right? right? right. However, yeah. <laughs> I do enjoy getting together with my family and sharing food. So now we've gotten into the habit of when we have these holidays, we play board games. And we just um, yeah. picked up this one board game. It's called uh, Code Names. So basically, Ooh. it's almost like it's almost like charades, but not really. So basically... You get a card and then you have these different color lights. Each team has a different color. And then you set up all these cards and then the colored lights tell you which are your card clues, like your code names. So basically you have to give hints to your teammates to guess the word, like which ones on the board belong to you. We had such an amazing time. And then it was funny because... I know how my mother's brain works. And when I was giving the clues, my brother was like, who's going to understand that? And my mom was like getting every single clue because I know how (laughs) her brain functions. So it was like we were cracking up and it wasn't even anything. You know, we didn't have to spend a lot of money. And I don't know how much the board game costs, but it's something that I used to do when I was a kid. I used to I remember I used to be part of the latchkey program. In elementary school, and we used to spend the afternoons playing board games. So we're bringing that element of fun back into our family, which is really cool. And it doesn't have to, it's not what, you're not sitting around watching TV. It's it's mentally stimulating, but also, you know, it's bringing a sense of closeness to the family as well. Yeah, we actually did the same thing this Thanksgiving. I posted it on, on, on Instagram. The game that we played was Tapple. Um, which has been, it was so fun that we just had friends over, adult friends over for my <laughs> husband's birthday. We played it with them too. And it was like, quack, 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 like such a, you know, such <laughs> laughter in the house. You have a roll of letters and you basically have to press down a letter whenever you think of something that goes with that letter. So let's say the category is like in the beach, okay. things in the beach, ball, and you press B so that nobody could use the letter B. So because we're all like, Spanish speakers, we were playing it in English, Spanish, and Spanglish. It was just so funny. So, love that you're talking about board games because, yes, it it is sometimes like returning to the things that we thought were fun as kids. That is like, it just creates that full loop, that full circle for us, and just like so healing, so beautiful. I love that. So, I wanted to end end the podcast with one last thing, which is. I had an episode with Grief, with Grief from Brujas of Brooklyn, and we were discussing sexuality, the divine feminine, mm-hmm. and motherhood. So I wanted to ask you, how do you make sure that you tap into that divine feminine and sexuality even after becoming a mother? Because I know Grief reposted part of the interview where we talked about we still want to be sexy. Yeah, You know, just because we become a mother doesn't mean that that part of ourselves gets cut off like a surgery, you know, we're still that sexual being. So how is it that you still tap into that divine feminine and sexuality, even after, you know, having Eva and and becoming a mom? It's so serendipitous that you're bringing this up now, because I was just having this discussion, both with my therapist and with my husband, because I think I finally, five years later, almost six years later, since I was pregnant, that I finally feel sexy. And it sounds crazy to say it out loud, but it's true. I think that it's important that people know that, that yes, we don't have to cut that piece off of us. I think that, I think the the cultures that we were brought up in perpetuate that 
Uh -huh. like, tú eres una madre, te tiene que tapar, like, you have to wear, dress a certain way, and, and, and you cover yourself, and you can't dance a certain way, and you can't wear those type of shoes, and you can't, like, you can't, you can't, you can't, and it's just so incredibly limiting, uh -huh. and whether we like it or not, or whether we succumb to those mindsets or not, it's in us, and so every decision that we make to move our bodies in a certain way, um, to go on dates, I was telling my husband the other day, like, when was the last time that we went on a date? Uh -huh. Like, to me, that's that feels sexy. Uh -huh. Getting a babysitter and going to dress up and just going to dinner and do something that we like to do together makes me feel sexy. Uh -huh. um, making the, the, just making the ways that, the things that make you feel complete in your sensuality and in your sexuality, in your womanhood, making those things a priority, whether it is, like, touching yourself, self-pleasure. Like you have no idea how many conversations I've had with clients who have been uncomfortable to talk about like masturbation. And I'm like, but I mean, you have 43 years. You're like, this is a thing. Like, it's like, let's have this conversation. Like, why is this a problem for you? And we've had to like intricately dive into the depths of like, and dive into the roots of like, why is this an issue for you? And how can we take care of it so that you can fully, like, you can't, think of expansion and being the full expression of who you are without fully expressing yourself sex sexually. And it has nothing to do with another person. Uh -huh. So it's, it's been a journey for me, for sure. Um, I think in me dealing with mental health issues, um, in me becoming a mother, in me learning my new body, because I felt like, you know, I had, I got pregnant, I had my daughter and then I was taken out of the hospital and I had this new body. New body, new hair, new skin, new everything. And I had no idea how to use it. Not for myself, not for my daughter, not for my husband, like not for the world. I had no idea up till now. Like That's so real. Years and years and years to, to finally feel one with myself. Um, and it's taken like, again, diving into different steps. Like I finally did it, you know, nutritionally with my body and done it spiritually and done it mentally. And like how now, and this is the first year, I think 2022, where I've been able to use things like Kundalini yoga, which is super sexual uh -huh. and super sensual and dives into, you know, connecting all of these pieces together so that you can be this beautiful expression of sensuality and of womanhood and of goddess, um, together. This is the first year that I've been able to do that. So thank you for that question because it, it is really full circle for me. Um, it's taking years and years and years. So for anybody who's listening to this right now who's having a tough time with like things like self-pleasure or even libido, like maybe you don't want to incorporate sexuality and sensuality into your life. Maybe you don't care about, you know, feeling sexy. That's a problem in itself. And it's something that you should dive into because everybody deserves the gift of yes. feeling whole in themselves in that way. And being around people that support you and they're like, yes, bitch. I feel mm -hmm. like that is so important because, you know, we are raised and socialized as Latinas, you know, in a certain way, especially, you know, we have this, there's like this disconnect between being a woman and being a mother, right? Once yeah. you're a mother, you have to forget about being a woman. And I've literally heard older you know, our, our elders say things like that, right? So kind of being like, fuck that noise. Like, be, you can be both. Like, <laughs> it's part okay. of who you are. You can be all the things. Tu puedes ser la santa, tu puedes ser la puta. You can be everything. And that is okay, you know? So for me, it was like being around a group of strong women, like the women in the Mami Chula Social Club. Like, yes, bitch, get it, whatever. Like, people that hype you up for you being you and standing in your truth and living authentically. I feel like that is part also of being sexy. Like, having people to support that. And even if you don't have anybody to support that, support that in yourself, you know? I feel Listen, like, like... Like you just mentioned, sometimes it'd be in communities that are first strangers like you mentioned the mommy chula social club who i also you know know uh i think of like the membership community that i host like those women come into this community not knowing a soul mm -hmm. and then we're all like in each other's comments like yes you look good girl or like you know uh -huh, you change uh -huh. your hair Bien buena. like sometimes it's people on the internet and that's okay too <laughs> like i just want to say that because sometimes it'd be your own people that be haters that's for another podcast that's for another conversation <laughs> 
but yes it, it does make totally you know a total total difference community is everything community yes. is everything yes so important and with that comadres we're gonna end the podcast how i always end it which is follow me at comadreando pod and you can follow melanie at please drop, drop your handle Melanie Santos dot co dot co. That is also my website and all of my other social media. Okay. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to send me a comadregram via email at marcy at dot com or slide up into my DMs. Thank you for spending an evening with your comadres. You are officially a comadre, Mel. Welcome yeah. to the club. <laughs> um, I will be dropping Melanie's website in the show notes and also she has a couple of events coming up I'm going to be posting that in the show notes as well and take care everyone and remember to be kind to each other bye hello hello comadre hey comadre do you have a minute for comadre time <laughs> <laughs>